Hello, everybody, and thank you so much for tuning in to the Doing Acting Studio class live. We are so excited to have all of you in the webinar. Thank you for being here. Grab those notebooks. We're going to get right to class. Our first performer here is V. So give yourself a little round of applause from home, and let's rock and roll through tonight. All right, V, so whenever you're ready, you can go ahead and begin, okay? Okay. Okay, first off, a lion swimming in the ocean. Lions don't like water. If you place it near a river or some sort of freshwater source, that makes sense. But you find yourself in the ocean, 20 foot wave, I'm assuming of the coast of South Africa, coming up against a full grown 800 pound tuna with his 20, 30 friends. <laughs> You lose that battle. You lose that battle nine times out of ten. And guess what? You wander into our school of tuna, and we now have a taste of lion. We talk to ourselves. We communicate and say, you know what? Lion tastes good. <laughs> Some more lion. We develop a system to establish a beachhead, and aggressively hunt you and your family. We will corner your pride, your your children, your offspring. We will construct a series of breathing apparatus with kelp. We'll be able to trap certain amount of oxygen, but it's not going to be days at a time. An hour, hour 45, no problem. That will give us enough time to figure out where you live, go back to the sea, get more oxygen, and then stalk you. <laughs> you just lost at your own game. You've been outgunned and outmanned. Did it go the way you thought it was going to go? Nope. And see. <laughs> nice. Hey, very good. So I wanted you to go all the way through it because I wanted to obviously see the whole thing. Um, yeah. I, I love this. Uh, this is from, um, ah, what is it? I, the other guys. Yes, yeah, the other guys. <laughs> Man, I've watched that movie so many times. I love it. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so you started exploring some of the choices with the phone, which is super cool. So we talked last mm -hmm. week about, about that and, and just exploring. So the one yeah. note starting on that is you want to be really careful and strategic about movement and making sure that like you're doing things like there was one spot where you put it where it was facing the fan and I wanted to get dizzy, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> right? So like, it, don't, don't be sorry. That's where like small little things you'll start to realize where are strategic points like mm -hmm. One of my favorite spots was when you're out of camera and you like came back in and you're like, because I would mess you up, you know, <laughs> like that's a strategic point where I've decided strategically to leave the frame to go do something specific mm -hmm. and come back. So what is the uh, what is the format you've decided for who you're talking to and why? Um, so it was like more like a friend i didn't want to like stick to the movie because i feel like we have like two different personal i have a different personality from the actor like will ferrell that's like doing that monologue so sure. I, I just wanted to make it mine so it's more like i'm talking to a friend on the phone that like try to like um educate me and i'm like no i'm gonna educate you and that's like where i go off okay so so why like what do they say that makes you go off um they're just trying to say oh like you know, like I'm above you, like I know more, like this is what would happen if I was in charge. Okay. So you hear that and it just, it just gets you to, to break, right? Yeah. So what I want you to work on, cause it's new and way to go on your memorization. I mean, way to just go, you know, I, 
And for those watching, she had a piece that she's been working for months, and now it's like, oh, I just want to switch it. <laughs> like, I want to try something different. And way to go, okay? So you mm-hmm. memorized it, you made it happen, and this is totally different from what you were doing before. So it's so yeah. cool. Uh, the funny thing is it's a comedy, but it's also a drama. It's both. Mm-hmm. And a lot of these parts are like that, where your character's taking this very seriously, but because of the things they're saying, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Like, she's just making bad comparisons and, and stuff like that, but she's dead serious, right? Mm-hmm. So let's start from the top. I'll work a couple moments with you, okay? Okay. Okay, first off, a line swimming in the ocean. Okay, great. So right there, you've got to think, and this is called moment before, right? You're dealing with the phone. So mm-hmm. where are they? Are they, They're on the phone with you, right? FaceTime? Yeah. Okay. First of all, a lion swimming in the ocean. So this is where the movie, you have to do play into the script itself. A lion swimming in the ocean. What are they talking about there? Um, I'm not sure to understand the question. <laughs> when, he, when she says, a lion swimming in the ocean? Mm-hmm. Ridiculous, right? Yeah. So that's that first line, right? Yeah. What was said to you to make you respond with that? Oh, that like um, um, the person like if that person was a lion, they will like own me. They will eat me. If if they were. Oh, okay. Yeah. So say it the way they would say it. Like who? Me or I the other know. person? The other person. Yeah. Oh. Um, I want you to know exactly what they said. And here's why. If you did, then uh, you can hear it really and then mm-hmm. respond naturally. So you're responding because you know the type of response you need to have. As yeah. an actress, you sort of have mapped out. You go, okay, I know I need to respond with this, like, really? But mm-hmm. I don't see you really hear her say it. Yeah. So decide. What did she say specifically? Um. So did, can I say just like this last few line he says? Yeah. Um, like, I, okay. Yeah. Um, if I was a lion, I will go into the ocean and I will eat you. And then I will go and bang you wife tuna. Okay. So hear that. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So you've got to hear that. You've got to hear that line, then decide how to deal with it. So grab your book. Okay. Get back to your book. Look up at him. You're having a conversation hear it he drops that on you you've been sitting here the whole time listening just listen just listen you're the power player here everyone's expecting you to just like not know what to say and then you drop knowledge okay so don't even be angry okay let's try it be angry or don't be don't be try just try just okay and come in with your response okay first off a lion swimming in the ocean lions don't like water <laughs> if you place it near a river or some sort of freshwater source that makes sense but you find yourself in the ocean 20 foot wave and i'm assuming of the coast of south africa coming up against a full grown 800 pound tuna with his 20 30 friends you lose that battle you lose that battle nine times out of ten and you can start getting more intense that's right good good you've wandered into our school of tuna and we now have a taste of lion we talked to ourselves we've communicated and said you know what lion tastes good (laughs) more lion sorry i broke you didn't i i broke you oh i couldn't help it i couldn't help it did you feel the difference yeah Definitely. So what changed? Let's take it down to its root. What changed? I feel like the first time I was more like, okay, I'm here to just deliver the line and like try to kind of put my acting in it. Yes. Um, But the second time was more like I'm actually in there and I'm actually like telling you what's up. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. And we, it's, it's such a trap we fall into, right? As actors, like we have a vision for where we want to take it and and what stuff we want to do with it. But the truth is, the best way to do this is to just 
step into the shoes of the character. And that's why I didn't want you to do anything until you knew what they said first and really heard it. Because when you hear it, then you realize, actually, he's just responding. Yeah. Totally. So she's just, like, dealing with it with logic because she's smart. And yeah. her knowledge just destroys him. And it's just this unexpected answer. And then now you had a reason, and you felt it in your gut, right, to pick up the phone at that point? That's mm -hmm. what we're talking about, using the phone to our advantage in this new medium that we're in. Like, you felt it in your gut, I have to pick this up now. And I'm going to use it to my advantage, and then I'm going to get in their face. And then your gut will tell you when it's time to stop being in their face and go somewhere else. Yeah. So keep exploring that this week and explore her thought life and, and see every response that this guy or girl, whichever you decide, opposite you, is saying, and, and even though they're not speaking, with their eyes. And I think there are a couple little lines in there that aren't in there, right, where they say something back. Yeah. I want you to hear those. I want you, like, if they're yeah. short, like, I believe they're short ones, right? They're, like, little, like, teeny tiny parts. Yeah, it's, like, halfway through, and it's, like, oh, how are you going to do that? Yes, and so you have to help. hear that. You have to, okay. right? So if I told you, like, I'm going to come over, and I'm, I'm going to rob your house. Ask me how. How? I'm just going to do it. Like, <laughs> I have to pause <laughs> to hear you say how. I have to, or else it's not real. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. Dude, this is so cool. I love this piece for you. It's, like, so free and just so different from the other ones. So way to uh, jump out there on a limb and just go, I'm going to try something. It's so cool. Yeah, uh, thank you. You're welcome. All right, very good job. Apply that. Next week is performance week, so this is for everybody. Um, what I want you to do is literally think through all of the blocking, think through that stuff, plan a bunch of things, and just uh, – be open to do whatever feels right in the moment, but you've tested things. And think okay. costume too. How do you think she dressed? Like, I love the book, like all that stuff, okay? Gotcha, all right. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, woo. <laughs> so while we bring in our next uh, performer here, we're gonna just basically talk about this last scene. So you as an audience, what we can get, oh, there's a double of me. You as an audience, what we can take out of this the most and grow from is uh, the fact that like, we need to know that beginning. Like, if you don't know your character's moment before and what happened right before the scene takes place, there's no way you could possibly be truthful in the moment. So you got to look in and go, what exactly was said? What setting am I in? And how does my character feel about what's going on? Like, those thoughts have to be in your mind before you go to perform this piece. And then once you do that, then it's a matter of just staying in the moment. Like, she said, she said it so well, like, all I did was before I was planning, I was planning and planning and planning, and then I just released this planning process and was just present, like completely present in the moment. So uh, that's the lesson for all of you taking it home. Um, learn from that, grow from that, and uh, we, can, we can go from there. So our next performer here is going to be Olivia. So hi, Olivia. Hey, what's up? Not much. Super excited. All right, you ready? Yeah. Okay, take your time. I know you got some props and some movement, so get yourself in the right state and start when you're ready. Okay. I have to tell you something, because if I don't, I'm going to burst into flames. You are... Cheese! You are so cheese! The cheesiest cheese I have ever met in my life. You are so cheese that it drips out of your pores and stinks up any room you walk into. Every damn idea you have is piggybacking off of someone else. You are the definition of a copycat who rides the coattails of others. And you have absolutely no inventive ideas of your own. You give nothing, nothing innovative or exciting or helpful to others. When you try, it's usually served like one great platter of rotting cheese because the circuitry in your brain is wired to cough and be foggy from all the cobwebs built up over the years from
we want ideas that feel. Big, huge, different. I want you to bring me something that is real. I need some truth. I need all the cheese to die, and I want you to throw some real shit in my face. I want to feel it. I am so sick and tired of the fake bullshit I see every single day of my life working in this world that I'm going to throw myself out that window and fall to my death if you don't change. I need you to save my life. Save me. I need oxygen. Oxygen. Do you hear me? Tomorrow, at noon, we'll reconvene here, and we'll see if you brought something with passion. I don't want theatrical. I want passion. I want soul-wrenching, gut-pounding, mind-bending, anxiety. I want a rupture. That's right. Tomorrow, or die, we all die. This meeting is dismissed, and scene. Scene, okay, good. So you worked on uh, clearly a lot of the blocking that we talked about last week and moving around. Tell me about it, how'd it feel? I mean, it was really weird. <laughs> yeah. Like just talking to, talking to myself, sure. talking to a camera. But it really helped, like, having my own props around. And I just think it was nice for, like, like I guess, like, this goes for, like, everyone. Too. I, mean, I don't know how everyone's going to feel because I can't speak for everyone. But, like, having a chance to have the audience see into the character's life a little bit. Because her, like, her name's Adrena. That's the name of the character. <laughs> She's the type of person that presents herself to be, like, not really type A, but sort of type A, like perfect at work all the time. Yeah. But now she's kind of letting this friend know, like, look, I'm not okay. I need you to know that I'm not okay, and we need we need to be communicating when we're, we're, we're not okay because this isn't the world I want to live in. I want to live in a world where we can be true. Yeah. Truthful. Well, and I, I started to feel some of that, like – and again, the idea of the movement and the reason you practice it is, is so that you feel a little more comfortable with it, right? Yeah. Um, are you used to the camera in that way, like having to do that? Well, it was my laptop and it's a little heavy, so like, I don't know, maybe <laughs> no, next time I'll try to use my phone. <laughs> that was actually the first suggestion I was going to give. So I was going to go, okay, yeah. I think that was a laptop. And it is. It's like, yeah. it's so much harder. It's a little awkward to keep my face in the frame. Exactly. Like you're trying to figure out exactly where you are and how to move. So, so I highly suggest, and this is for everybody. Honestly, I think everybody should do it via phone and, and just have it, uh, horizontal this way. Right. Yeah. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, have it that way. And, and that way you can move around with it and you can sort of like play and, and what you have to do in that setting is like the laptop. You have to set it up in certain areas so that you can plan that so that you know it's not gonna fall over and you know where you're gonna set it. Like, it's all blocking. Like, this is just a whole new genre that we're dealing with, right? Yeah. We're, we're blocking a whole new deal. Like, I'm looking at how do I block inside of a cell phone conversation, which I believe there will be shows like this. We're gonna move in this direction because it's becoming a new medium, right? Yeah. So, uh, cool. So, do that, and I'm gonna work a couple moments in the beginning. I wanted to see it all the way through because we're performing next week all the way uh, as our showcase and so I wanted to give you a chance to just get all the way through it because I know we've been stopping and going and stopping and going and with your blocking I wanted you to have the opportunity to do that okay mm -hmm. so let's just work a, a teeny bit at the beginning here okay I have to tell you this because if I don't I'm going to burst into flames you are Cheese. You are so cheese. What made you say cheese there? 
because it was part of it's part of my props. I <laughs> had a sandwich right here. <laughs> okay, good. But it's also in the it's also in the monologue. Right. Yeah, it is. So it I is. decided to work it in the monologue. So what what's happening is I'm catching you. Catching me doing what? I'm catching you knowing you need to look at the cheese at a certain point so that you can talk about the cheese because you know it's coming. Okay. Right. So mm -hmm. let's just try something. I, this might not work. Okay. Grab the sandwich. Okay. Is it like an eatable sandwich? Like edible? <laughs> Yeah, that's edible. Okay, I'm <laughs> just making sure. It's falling, it's, not, like, it's falling apart, but it's dropped edible. dropped it from like hours <laughs> ago and like you take a bite, ugh, like just making sure. All right, so grab the yeah. sandwich. Go ahead and take a bite. Now start your monologue. I have to tell you this because if I don't, I'm going to burst into flames. You are, jeez. You are so cheese. Good. So it's in that moment, that was that was better. How did how did that feel? How did that feel? It was it was kind of funny, but it felt good. It was awesome. Okay. It was awesome. So then, what needs to happen is you are you can't figure it out. You're taking a bite and you look at your sandwich, <laughs> and that's when you go cheese. You are cheese, and it's a terrible analogy. Just like a god awful analogy for for the situation. But then. You're stubborn. You're a stubborn character. I get that out of you. And so you're not going to back down from this thing. So cheese is now what you're going to use to fuel the whole rest of this conversation. And it'll right. keep building. So really what we did was we just found a way in this moment to make it more natural for you. So at some it's point. natural. Yeah. So, so then at some point near there, you'd probably abandon the sandwich and move to, to just maybe talking to them or going somewhere else. But like that brought such a natural energy to you and so for everyone watching and for you like learn that you should find ways in your peace to do that for yourself like you'll feel it you know when you're like comfortable and relaxed and being whatever you're supposed to be in this piece and when you're performing and the hardest part is in the rehearsal process you need to stop yourself if you feel you're performing and you need to start asking questions and go, why? Why do I feel that way? Okay, well, it's weird that I'm saying this line. Okay, why? Let me see if I can figure that out. Hmm, let me try things. I, I gave you the sandwich thing fully expecting it to fail completely. <laughs> fully expecting you to put the sandwich in your mouth and have it get stuck and make it so you can't talk. And I was like, oh, I'm going to fail. But I got, I'm going to try something. And that's what this whole rehearsal process looks like. So as you prepare for this next week, like that sandwich, you can use that and find other things. When something feels off, explore and try to find out why. Okay. Okay? Very good. good. Nice work. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. See you next week. See you next week. So as we are bringing in our next performer here, uh, the big lesson there for everybody is if it doesn't feel right, right? If, if your piece is feeling off for any way, shape, or form and you're rehearsing, you should stop. And that includes in a partner rehearsal. So if, if you and your partner are working on something and there's this moment and you feel off, you have the responsibility to tell them that and just go, hey, this wasn't feeling right. And if they're like, oh, man, I would really like to just keep going. Like you go, all right, well, we need to break this down or it's not going to get any better. We get to the end. Now, if you wanted to do like a full run through just to run it through and you're doing this is a run through rehearsal. I want to record it, watch it back, learn from it. That's a whole nother animal. But when you're really diving into your rehearsal, it should look like a stop and go style rehearsal where this person is like, and in this case in a monologue, you are being disciplined enough to feel if you come out of the moment and then get curious as to why. The why is so important there because we can all day just make a feeling and go, I feel this way. But you need to then make the decision to go, all right, I'm now going to do something about it. I'm now going to figure out that why. I'm going to try a sandwich. I'm going to just, like, go lay on the couch. Like, I don't know what's going to happen, but I know I need to do something. Hey, Jonathan. Hi. What's up, buddy? Nice to see you. Nice to see you too, man. All right, I'm going to pull you over here. Okay. So Jonathan, can you uh, pause that live there for me? Yeah, I'll pause that. Okay, great. You know how? 
Hey, Jonathan. Hey, what's up, buddy? Let me give it a second. What it? You gotta love that technology, right? What yeah. uh, yep. that We'll get there. Yeah. So how you been, buddy? What's new with you? That's not closing all my pants. <laughs> so while that's going, Jonathan, while she's helping you out, tell me about the work you did this week. Um, I just trying to get it down to a science of trying to get down what I was going to say, what the background was going to be, okay. all of that. Did you make any discoveries? I don't know what he's trying to do. Come, could you come here, Dad? What are you trying to close? I was trying to Oh, the YouTube video. That part. So you can just mute it or pause it. I don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. It's not the I main. don't know how to hearken, to be honest with you. Okay. Yes, you the line, and I can't do it. So what we can do is I'll send you uh, over. So if we can't fix it there, then I can send you to Shay, and she can help you out and help you, like, walk through how to. Oh, there it is. Boom. <laughs> got it. We have a plan. We got a plan. <laughs> well, we think we have a plan. Hey, you know. Never mind. Okay. All right. Minimize. Take what? your time. I love it. I know you guys practice some blocking and some different things, so uh, you can start you can when try. you're ready. That's all you can do. Honey, I don't know what you're trying to do. I know what I'm trying to do. <laughs> We're going to find out. All right, Brian, this is not not good for me. I am not the technology girl. Well, we'll figure it out. Hey, one day at a time, right? Where are you trying to get? You're trying to do what? Just minimize it. So, this? Yeah. There we go. How you doing, Brian? I'm good, man. I'm good. You? <laughs> <laughs> Let's rock no, and roll, dude. Hey, hey this do, is part right? of, let me just talk on this to everybody. This is yeah. part of the process, you know? Well, well that's yeah. good. I'm serious. We're all learning new things. Like I did a Zoom call with my grandma the other day. Oh my! <laughs> yeah, that would not have gone well with me. I can. Uh, well, it didn't with her either at first, and we got it. Like we figured out some different like ways to do this video call, and and now we do uh, FaceTimes all the time now. Her and I and my mom every night, and so it's like we're learning, guys. We're all and and it directly connects to acting. It's like we should always be learning and growing, and so. Uh, you'll keep figuring it out. Like, keep figuring it out. Keep getting curious, and and you will figure out technology. I promise you. All, All right. right. John, you want me to do it? Yep. You want me to do it now? Finally. Yeah. Go ahead, buddy. Go ahead. When I was a kid, I used to wake up screaming from these horrible nightmares. I used to think there are murderers and kidnappers coming to get me in my sleep. Weirdly enough, it gave me this bizarre comfort to know at least I'd be on TV then, and people would cry about how young I was and what a horrible shame and what a waste, and yada, yada, yada. These days, it isn't the waking up that's rough. It's the trying to get to sleep. I just lie awake and think about how I used to believe I'd be a millionaire by 30. And that was if the economy was bad. Okay, I'm gonna start you over, okay? Uh, it's already better, already better. So tell me about the point of view change you made, how you changed your point of view for this character. It's, he's more like having a conversation with someone instead of just not talking to anyone. Okay, good. So, more so conversational. Who is he talking to, what did you decide? One of his dad's old cop friends. Okay. Why is he talking to him? Because I ran into him at the store I was working at, and he invited me out for a drink. Okay, great. So I want you to sit and imagine you're in that setting, okay? And this is uh, just going to explore something here, okay? Yeah. Again, exploration. Let's make that a theme today, okay? Yeah. You are um, like five beers deep yeah okay so he's a little drunk and I don't necessarily think that's right for this piece right now but I want to try I, I just want to try something for a minute 
I want to try a moment of him just just having had a drink for a second. And it's it's not going to be what we're going to go with. I know that. But I just want to yeah. try a moment. So start from the top and just be that way for a second. When I was a kid, I used to wake up screaming from these horrible nightmares. I used to think there are murderers and kidnappers coming to get me in my sleep. Weirdly enough, it gave me this bizarre comfort to know at least I'd be on TV then. And people would cry about how young I was and what a horrible shame and what a waste. And yada, yada, yada. <laughs> These days, it isn't the waking up that's rough. It's the trying to get to sleep. I just lie awake and think about how I used to believe think I'd be it. a millionaire by 30. Think about it. Think about it. And that was if the economy was bad. How I'd be married by 25 and have a family after that. That's how it's supposed to work. That's how it's supposed to work. Like vent for me, vent, vent, vent. That's how it's supposed to work. A degree is supposed to be useful. Or maybe I'm just lazy. Or maybe I'm just doing it wrong. Or maybe Keep thinking, keep keep study. thinking. New ideas, new I ideas. Study maybe to be an engineer, like my mom said. Okay, good, yeah. good. Jonathan, did you feel a difference? Yeah. So again, it's it's actually not about being drunk. So here's why I picked that specifically. With that, one of the things it does is it frees up people's inhibitions, usually in a bad way. <laughs> yeah. Right? But it does. So then they usually lose train of thought and they start jumping in different spots. When yeah. you watch this back, you're going to see it was already more interesting. Because he in, was jumping. Because he's he jumping. jumping. And he is in this piece. He's reflecting on his entire life for some reason. So it doesn't have to be because he's sitting and drinking, but you made the choice that the guy asked you to go out for a drink. So it would make sense. He doesn't have to be drunk, but it would make sense that he's had a drink or two to be able to open up in that way. And so every line you have cannot sound and feel like the one before it. It has to be different. It has Maybe. to be different. And, and you'll feel it. Yeah. Could you feel that it was the same before? Yeah. So then when you started exploring and just trying something different, trying something different, you captured our attention. You yeah. captured it. So now okay. this week when you're practicing, I want you to go and I want you to do that. I want you to go like, okay, any moment, and this is what I talked about in the last one, any moment if you feel that it's off or that you're doing the same thing, pause, Try something different. Explore. Like the whole point of the rehearsal process is not to get through the piece, but to keep stopping and going and trying yeah. things and exploring. And again, when you did that, you had me, man. You had my attention. You had me laughing. Like, or oh, yada, yada, yada. Like that line hit so hard this time because it was clear that you just didn't care. Yeah. And that's in that moment what he's feeling. Because he wouldn't care. He wouldn't be in his head about it. He would just... Exactly. Talk. Exactly. And so for him, he probably probably did only have one beer or whatever, right? But yeah. he's so free in his self, if that's the character you've decided, that, that he just speaks his mind. And there are people like yeah. that who literally they just they monologue out loud everything that they're feeling. And when they're mad, they're mad. They just tell you how mad they are. And then the next second they're like, but that's not what I wanted. <laughs> you know? And I think there's there's so much of him that's that's movement based as far as like the change of dialogue and energy yeah. okay yeah so think about it like that you're on a long rant of your life that's going to lead to a really powerful emotional moment where you really talk about wanting to be a teacher but here's the truth yeah. Jonathan I think all, a lot of us do this when we are feeling pain we mask it with things yeah and I believe your character in the beginning he starts talking about stuff but he's he's masking his pain with comedy. Yeah. That's what's happening. And eventually he opens up to the why, to wanting to be a teacher and, and how that never happened. And then then you get emotional and then it hits us. Yeah. But if you start um, like super emotional right off the bat, you've got nowhere to go. And then we don't get to see that cool transition your character makes when they decide not to be that way anymore. Yeah. Cool. Good work, man. Thanks. Proud of you. Woo. And mom, we figured out a little technology, so way to go. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Cool. Thank Thanks. you, guys.
All right, so the lesson there for everybody, just jumping on that, is again, we're building on exploration here. So, like, you want to explore, you want to try things. I want to, I want to do something that I think would totally fail and just go for it. And then within the lines, every single line has to feel and be different because the truth is, in life, we don't know what we're going to say next. So, the biggest challenge of the actor is to go, how do I make this line that I know perfectly? I know exactly what it means. How do I take that and make it like I never said it before? And so the way we do that is sort of exploring the emotions of the character. So whatever piece you pick up, that's what I want you to start doing is approaching it with that mentality. Okay. Michaela, hello. Hi. You are sideways for me. Can you turn it? Yeah. Okay, perfect. My bad. <laughs> it's it's just not translating. Try it again. See if it'll work. See if it'll. Really? Hey, there it is. Okay, perfect. Oh, yeah. It's better the other way if you can hold it that way. But if okay. you can't. Yeah, no. I'll do it this way. Okay. okay. Great. Oh, sorry. I'm gonna try something today. <laughs> hold on. What's the theme today so far? So last week, Matt said I was a little too charactery. Okay. So I'm going to try and bring it down some. <laughs> okay, cool. And I was practicing on movement, so we'll see how it goes. And then the theme of today from the other performances, what's it so far? What do you mean? Like, what have we gone over? Um, I think background, kind of who she is as a person, and I think just how she would approach things. Sure. So we just we basically been through every performance today exploring things. So now you're you're not used to this new way. So you're like, okay, I'm gonna try something. Good. <laughs> That's yeah. kind of our theme tonight. So go ahead, get right into it. I can't wait to see what comes. <laughs> okay, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Okay. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't open that little box. One more crack. Don't ask me to marry you. Just don't say another word. Just listen. I can't let you do this to me. I mean, before I met you, I used to be such a bitch. I mean, seriously, everyone at work thought I was a huge bitch. No one actually liked me. Those people I introduced to you as my friends, they're not my friends. They're scared of me. Or they were. Before I met you. Before you. I never said please or thank you at restaurants. I never smiled or laughed at anyone's jokes but mine. I never used to tip more than 10%. I was quick with insults. Always had a cool word. I was cold, cross, cross, falsely compassionate. But since being with you, I've begun to feel all warm inside. That's like the most disgusting thing in the world. I find myself wanting to stroll in the park and whistle. Okay, good, the... good, good. How's it feeling? How's it feeling? Good. <laughs> Still trying to get used to it. Okay. So uh, it, it is less character than last week already. Yeah. I already like it yeah. better. It feels a little more connected. So I'm just going to connect it a little deeper here. I'm going to try something again. And this just okay. ha happened to have done it in the last scene, but we're going to do it also. I notice you have a drink. Yes. It's great. I love that. <laughs> it's supposed to be wine. <laughs> I, of course it is. It's awesome. I love that. I love that. So I want her to, without being too, like, I don't want you to be character -y. I don't want you to try to be. But she's already had, like, three or four. Okay. <laughs> okay? So at some okay. point, you're going to decide to go back to that other one. But, like, you've you've had a couple already, and you were already thinking about, like, maybe possibly, like, that he's not right and this isn't going to work out and then he calls and this happens right okay and first of all he's a coward because he's doing it over video chat right <laughs> <laughs> but because of our medium like we get to deal with that right so so i want you to just see him and i'm going to walk you through your thought life a little bit okay? okay so just imagine yourself don't like overplay a little but we're gonna actually we are we're gonna overplay a little just for fun you would bring this down a little okay hold your drink okay. for now I'm okay. starting with the drink. I, I think you'll get to it later, but for now, try it. Try just holding the drink and being there with the drink. Okay. Okay. And start from the top when you're ready. Don't 
don't do it. <laughs> don't open that little box one more, Greg. Don't ask me to marry you. Okay, good. So you got to wait for the don't ask me to marry you. Okay. Okay, go again from the top. Should I start over? Yeah. Okay. Don't do it. Don't open that little box one more crack. Don't ask me to marry you. <laughs> Don't say another word. Just listen. I can't let you do this to me. I mean, before I met you, I used to be such a bitch. I mean, seriously. Everyone at work thought I was a huge bitch. <laughs> no one actually liked me. Those people I introduced to as my friends, they're not my friends. They were scared of me. Or they were before I met you. Okay, good. Before so now it's too happy. <laughs> but here's the thing. I, what we're doing is we're finding moments. So then you, okay. you grab moments and you combine moments. You go, oh, I really like this here. I liked how that happened there. So there were there were a few little, and you'll, you'll notice them when you watch back, moments where her drunkness just helped the line come out and just helped so much show what she was feeling, okay? okay. So I'll just start work one more second, okay? Go back to the beginning really quick. I have to, okay? And okay. And then I'll give you so, your... Uh, then not, and don't, not so drunk, right? Not so drunk, a little bit. Okay. okay. Just holding it. I'm going to be the guy here. Don't do it. Don't ask me to make... Oh, fuck. Sorry. It's okay. Oh, Sorry. Shit. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry again. It's okay. Sorry. Don't do it. Don't... Okay. You're, you're terrified it. of this. Okay? okay. I'm holding the box. Terrified. Look. Look. Look at it. Just just feel. Don't do just it. feel. Just feel. What would be your worst nightmare? Um. What are you terrified of? Uh... I feel like what I'm terrified of is like very abstract. It's like nothing physical. <laughs> okay, what is it? Like failure. Okay. This is like, this is, you're facing right now the biggest failure in your life right in front of you. Look at it. Okay. Okay. Just feel that for a second. He's about to open the box. Don't do it. Don't open that little box. One more crack. Don't ask me to marry you. Now pause. He's going to wonder why. So there, you got to let him wonder for a second. Okay. And then that fuels your next line where you say, Shh, Don't say another word. Just listen. <laughs> so you have to hear it, you see? Okay. So you hear the things that are saying. And I love what Matt brought in last week where we go, Okay, she is uh, unlike any other person in that girl specifically. It's like she doesn't want to get married. Yeah. She doesn't want a normal, <laughs> like she wants to be bad and she wants her life to not go this direction. And because of that, that's why this is terrifying for her. And then she just, I think same as Jonathan's as a defense mechanism, because she's scared of commitment. She lays into him. Okay. Right. I mean, she sort of talks about how her whole life, like without him, she was so much better basically. Right. Yeah. So she liked who she was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So play into that a little bit. You don't need to be drunk. That's not the point. But when you watch back, you'll see there were some moments where you were more playful and thinking back more for real about what was going on. And we want to bring some of that into your piece. Okay. Okay? Okay. 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 Good job. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We did well at being drunk. No. <laughs> <laughs> Theme of the night, audience, is uh, grab yourself a drink. No. <laughs> We're really dealing with just exploration here. So same as before. Like, we start making choices. And this one was get the stuff out. Like, get things out that are going to work, aren't going to work. And honestly, like, what I was trying to do is get her to just be a little more free with it, a little more thinking through the thoughts and, and being natural within some of that. And some of that came. And then the other big lesson we took as we started to really break it down and slow down was every single moment of a piece, you have to hear the other side even though it's not happening. So you've got to see that guy on his knee and you've got to experience the moment with them right then. 
in order to truly be able to bring out whatever the character is experiencing at that time. So when you get a script, you got to look at it and figure out your whys, figure out like what she's feeling and, and why she's feeling that way so that then you can experience the whole rest of the piece from there. So that's that big thing that we can uh, sort of take away from there and, uh, and build upon. So very, very good work. And for everybody watching, thank you again for watching and, and continuing to just be a part of this and, um, and watch. All right, Nick, what's up, my friend? How you going, man? It's good. How are you? Good. Good. All right, you ready? Ready. So I'm not going to do – I decided to do the uh, the King John one tonight and probably maybe do the drunken one a different time. I haven't done this one in a while. Well, we've had a lot of drunk tonight, so that's uh, that's okay. We can switch out of the drunk mode and get somewhere different. I like it. All cool. right, man. Whenever you're ready. <clears throat> My crown was passed to me by my brother and my father before him. I was born to be a king. It is my birthright given to me by God. You cry for the common man, yet in the same breath curse the crown that protects him. You dare question my reign and the lineage of kings who have ruled before me. The great Amrithine royalty of Aquitaine who forged this land from barbarian hordes and made it noble and pure, who gave it order, meaning, and even faith. And through a thousand years of loyal subjects, it is all now questioned by you. And we are forced to sign your precious Magna Carta, forced by you. I am the blood. I am God's right hand, and you will never dictate to me how I am to be a king. Scene. Okay, good. So I want to first ask, what made you want to do the change? Um, it was more in tune with, I guess, the way I was feeling today. I kind of felt like I could connect with this a little bit better than the, the funnier, funnier monologue. Okay. I had a feel. It felt pretty good. The f when I first started doing this monologue, uh, his character, King John, is actually insane at this point in the movie because he's lost a bunch of castles. He's about to lose his crown. But um, Matt said maybe it was a little too too crazy. And he said, as a king, you know, you shouldn't have to yell and scream to get your point across. So I started to do it in a more calm way, but firm. So. Okay, good. So uh, I'm going to work some moments for you. I, I sensed that, and I liked it. I liked good. it. I like the, the idea of, of because of your power, you don't need to do some of those things, okay? Um, so we'll start from the top. I'm going to work a couple moments with you, okay? Okay, sure. Cool. <clears throat> my crown was passed to me by my brother and my father before him. I was born to be a king. It is my birthright given to me by God. You cry for the common man, yet in the same breath curse the crown that protects him. You Good. dare question. So there I felt like we automatically stayed right where we were, and it started to change a little bit vocally, but I'm not seeing his his whole emotion change. So what are you feeling right off the bat? As soon as I start? Yeah. Annoyance that, that, that I'm being questioned, kind of like, um, like who is this to question me type of feeling okay good start me from the top okay <clears throat> my crown was passed to me by my brother and my father before him i was born to be a king it is my birthright given to me by god you cry for the common man yet in the same breath curse the crown that protects him think about you it think about it. that's an insult at him insult him with that and physicalize it somehow you cry for the common man, yet in the same breath curse the crown that protects him. You dare question my reign and the lineage of kings who have ruled before me, the great Amerinthine royalty of Aquitaine, who forged this land from barbarian hordes and made it noble and pure, who gave it order, 
Good. Meaning keep building, keep building, keep building. So each one of those things, I want you to see it and get excited and let one build off of the other. Like visualize okay. these things. This is your family's legacy. This is, okay. that, and that's being questioned, right? So like mm -hmm. start, start me back a little where you start like sort of uh, talking about, talking right from Aquitaine. Okay. The great amaranthine royalty of Aquitaine who forged this land from barbarian hordes and made it noble and pure, who gave it order, meaning, and even faith. And through a thousand years of loyal subjects, it is all now questioned by you. And we are forced That's, to Let's try this by, by you. Let's, let's, by you. Like, like, he doesn't matter. He's like, so basically what he's saying there, it's not really an insult. It is, but like, of, of, you're going to insult everything that we have? Like you're gonna insult the land and the history and uh, and and you're gonna do it. You, <laughs> like, you're nobody, kind of deal. You know. Okay. Like yeah. try and play into that versus the, like you. You know, like because yeah. even again, if you give him that, you're giving him that power of making him feel like he's important. And I think the line there is going into the fact that he's not important. Like you, you're sure. gonna do that. Like. Right. You don't even have to even get like angry there, like you can just you could just lay on him that he's a little teeny tiny ant, and you're a human boot. Gotcha. Okay, let's try that. All right. <clears throat> and through a thousand years of loyal subjects, it is all now questioned by you, and we are forced to sign your precious Magna Carta, forced by you. We are, I am the blood. I am God. And that's what, right. yeah, that's when you can come back to power, right? Okay. So you see, you're, you're sort of insulting there. And here's what we're doing. We're just playing different beats. Yeah. That's a truthful beat where you're basically like saying, you, you really? And then you come back and you're like, well, it's me. I'm the one. Right? Gotcha. So let's take it back from insulting him and then we'll end up with that power. It is all now questioned by you. I am the blood. I am God's right hand, and you will never dictate to me how I am to be a king. Scene. All right. And your last note is you got to stay in it because that was great. Did it feel oh, better okay. to you? Yeah. It did, yeah. And I, I've been practicing. I know I'm not supposed to, but I've been practicing it a certain way for so long that mm -hmm. it, it's – but now I can see that clearly. I'm going to change it up a little bit. Totally, sure. totally. And, you know, that's a trap we all fall into. So explore that this week. Play the different beats. But that's the idea is Matt gave you a great trail with, with not having to be angry. And he's right because he's a king. So also in that same way, like, you're, you're almost mocking. Because when I get – I told the teen class this today. When you get angry at someone back, they win. Right. So if you're getting intense because you believe in what you're saying, cool. When you get mad back at somebody, that's exactly the response they want, so they win. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Good job, Nick. Thanks, Brian. You're welcome, bud. All Take right. care. Woo. All right, so coming into our next week here, uh, excuse me, into this next performance, as we're preparing, this is for the audience and for everybody, the big thing I want us to take away from this is, again, varying in different beats, like realizing that we have to change our energy. Like, no matter how good it is, if we play that same note over and over, we're going to get stuck in that place. And so was the emotion right to come in with power? Absolutely. But the same thing over and over, and we get lost in it. We, we get lost as an audience, and you lose our attention. So when Nick explored sort of a different side and dove into the script, we realized that a line was saying something different than what we were portraying. In that specific line, it was basically saying, you're an ant, and I'm the boot. And then he comes back in and stomps right at the end. And so if you can start looking at your script, you can use script analysis to figure out what you think the writer is trying to get across, and then figure out varying different ways in which you could do it, and then going back to the previous scenes, then you explore them. Then we try those options and do that. And I highly encourage anybody if, who's watching and doesn't have a monologue, to pick one up and just start exploring some of this. Like, go through and, and, and just pick a spot, pick a monologue that you think would be interesting, 
and start performing it. Start practicing it and, and start to work on those things. And the next thing you know, you'll be working into this this whole new level of you. Like, um, yeah, so super good. Good work. Good work, Nick. It's awesome. All right, let's see here. Who's our next performer here? Okay, we've got Andrea. Hey, Andrea. Hello. Did we get to practice at the phone a bit? Yes, we did. And I found a better place to put it. That was kind of the most difficult part I found. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. Can't wait to see it. So start when you're ready. One second, Andre. I had something go on with the computer here. You disappeared because somehow a phone pulled up. Uh, one second. I am going to do this. Okay. Great. Hi. Hi. Okay. We are back. Okay. Whenever you're ready. Gotcha. What? Why'd I, uh, Burn the bitch's hair. Light fur locks. Torture trousers. Her hair was a symbol of purity, and my lighter was a symbol of corruption. God told me to do it. The devil made me do it. Charles Manson is just so damn persuasive. She was Joan of Arc, and I was the townspeople of Salem. I did it for Jodie Foster. Boredom. Plain and simple. It was um it was a cry for help, a plea for insanity. Red rum. Red rum. Okay, I'm gonna stop you. <laughs> so what movement did we decide on? For the phone? Yeah. Um, I was not I was kind of struggling with that piece. I was going to when I say, Oh no, 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 wait, don't go. I was gonna find I have a little trouble framing it still. I'm still trying to figure that bit out. Okay. But I was going to stand up and like try to stop him from going. Okay. Before, so and then maybe wander off because I feel like at that point in the monologue she starts getting a little bit more uncomfortable because it's not this facade that she's put on from sure. all the labels that other people have given her. But it's kind of her being like, "This is actually what's going on with my life, and it kind of sucks, and I don't want to talk about it." So yeah, yeah. Um, so here's where you're having trouble with the him leaving, right? Because he's not in the room. Um, I'm having trouble trying to find a way to frame me standing up so it's not just a shot of like my stomach or something. I, like, I guess I could like back the chair up a little bit, but then at the same time I have to sit back into it so I don't. Is it so? It's a phone you have. Yes. Okay, pick it up. We're just gonna do some exploration. Okay. Gotcha. Think of this like uh, blocking, okay? We're just going to just start okay. exploring some things, okay? So, gotcha. um, what, show me the room. Show me what's around. Um, I have a big empty space back here. I don't know if I'm framing it right. And I'm sitting at a desk, and I'm sitting in a chair, and my bed's back there. So. Okay, good. Go sit up on the bed. Gotcha. I'm just going to try some stuff. I'm on the bed. <laughs> and eventually... Okay, now go all the way to the back part of the bed. Like if you were going to sit up against the pillows. Like if you were going to chill on your bed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Now, she doesn't care about how she's perceived, right? Yeah. That's the beauty of this character. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> we're just going to explore, and some of this is going to work, and some of it isn't. I think eventually uh, it'll end up at the desk at some point, and that's where she might just, like she might set it down there. Because she's like dancing around the room and being ridiculous, and then he starts to leave, and that's when she rushes back to the desk, something gotcha. like that. But let's start here. Start her in the bed. Mm -hmm. You can play with the stuffed animals. 
okay. and use them as a prop to like show things. You can like get up. Like, here's what I want you to do. I want you to fail. There may be a point where I okay. literally accidentally get dizzy for a second. Like, I want you to try things. Okay. Explore. Be crazy as her. You might get up and throw, like at some point you might throw the phone down on the bed and just start like being ridiculous. Red rub. Like, I don't know. Like, just start, <laughs> get, whatever your creative mind brings to it, I want you to do. I want you to do whatever that creative side of you tells you to do. Okay? Got you. All right, let's see what happens. What? Why'd I um, burn the bitch's hair? <laughs> Torture trousses, like her locks. Her hair was a symbol of purity, and my lighter was a symbol of corruption. God told me to do it. The devil made me do it. Charles Manson is just so damn persuasive. She was Joan of Arc, and I was the townspeople of Salem. I I did it for Jody Foster. Boredom. Plain and simple, it was um, it was a cry for help, uh, a, a plea for insanity. Red rum, <laughs> red rum. <laughs> okay, all right. I mean, come on, can't we just blame it on the government or the education system or something? PMSing, puberty, my parents. Okay, good, good, good. How was that? It felt a little bit more chaotic but like in a good way <laughs> like the amount of chaotic that it needed to be yes yes and so you'll start to find and here's where the practice comes in you record it on your phone you record these things and you realize okay this didn't really work because I just can't be seen very well so I have mm -hmm. to figure that out and figure out where I'm gonna put things and do things but it was my favorite moment was when you went to lay down like when you mm -hmm. went and put your elbows up like where you're at right now and you chose mm -hmm. to go there for a reason. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna find out all the choices you have within your, your setting, your set, if you will. Mm -hmm. And then you'll look at the script and go, where do I think the best moments are to use those things? So right. it may be you start at the desk and start dancing around the room and then grab the phone and relax on the bed and then go over here like, I want you to though start exploring because I believe that if I hadn't held you grab the phone, you wouldn't have done it. Yeah, I was kind of stuck in this idea of like, I had this and I see now that it didn't really transition well, but I was going to do it in a way that it was constantly from his perspective. And we were kind of like, because this happens in a mental institution in the play. Mm -hmm. So I figured I was like being brought in to talk to him and I was going to keep the phone still and just work within the frame that I could get with the phone and just not move the phone at all. But now that I've moved the phone, it definitely feels a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that, well, you know, that's the other one was good. I mean, that's good thought life to figure out. Okay, that's what I think. So then it's like, let me let me see if there's another option, right? Let mm -hmm. me just try something different. And because here's the thing, you could have picked it up and started doing it, and it didn't work. Right. And we were like, this just doesn't work for this piece. In which case, we would have adjusted. But I want mm -hmm. you to learn and get comfortable with not playing it safe and just trying things. Just right. going with things and, and seeing where it takes you because you're very creative, Andrea. You're very creative. And Thank you. <laughs> this is where the artist gets to shine is through choices. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Can't wait to see it next week in performance. I can't wait to perform it. <laughs> All right. Have a good week. You too. Woo. All right. As we bring in our next performer here, same kind of deal. The thing that I want everybody to jump into on this one with exploration is we are like creating a new type of acting within the phone. Like basically we're, we're staring into the screen and creating TV shows that I, we believe as a staff that this kind of thing, this is going to be a whole new type of genre. So we're learning all types of the set. We're learning how to block. We are our own cinematographer, editor, director, and actor in this. So it's so exciting because we get to get creative. And that's, that's what we are, we're artists. So you as an artist now have the freedom to go, what all can I do with this space? What all can I do with the props around me? What, and then when you start doing them, just figure out what works and doesn't and explore.
like be willing to be wrong one of the biggest mistakes actors makes is we, we we find a choice we like and then we're just safe and we stick to that choice well every performance you give as an actor needs to be new and fresh and different than the performance you did before cool i'm gonna jump in and pull in our next person here hi brian hello hey white root oh man yay i'm here you here all right yes. dude Go ahead and start whenever you're ready, my okay. friend. And um, is it changed to phones? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So Ideally. Do you want yeah. me to just like kind of like make it up while I like, Yeah. Go explore. You know, feel. Just know the thing we're going through is you have the ability to do stuff. Like you are the director. Okay. You are the like. So if your gut tells you to, you can pick it up and go lay somewhere or do whatever. Like you're not okay. stuck to right here. Okay. Here's what's not beautiful about this town. From here, you can't see all the rust. Okay, good. I'm going to start you over. Purely just for slowing down diction-wise. Okay. So I know that's something we were working right before you left. Yeah. For a couple weeks. So mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. each word needs to be heard. Okay. So you rush that first line. I actually believe okay. the emotion. I just want to slow you down. Okay. Here's what's not beautiful about this town. From here, you can't see all the rust or cracked paint or whatever. But you can tell what the place really is. You see how fake it all is. It's not even hard enough to be made out of plastic. It's a paper town. I mean, look at it. Look at all those cul-de-sacs. Those streets that turn in on themselves. All the houses that were built to fall apart. All the paper people living in their paper houses, burning the future to stay warm. All the paper kids drinking beer some bum bought for them at a paper convenience store. I've moved four times and never once in my life have I ever met someone who actually cares about something that matters. Same. How'd it feel? felt better i feel like starting out it always like my voice is like oh you know i just yeah. need to like get the first line to sound in my character but that's it okay sure so tell me about the character here they're kind of like at the edge they're they just break they've been like going through like previously i see my character as like getting trying to have friends that doesn't work out trying to have a family that doesn't work out mm -hmm. they obviously have moved four times and each time they don't feel at home so they're kind of like at their breaking point sure cool so i want to explore a little bit with the movement and with being able to do stuff okay. okay so one of the things that is an option is like i'll use my hand here you can get up into the camera's face so like literally okay. like you could be in that sort of setting there and i could just okay. come into it like Okay. And you can explore your space too. Because I think part of this, he's like sort of thinking through it. Yeah. As he's going along, like you could pace through your room for a second and then okay. come back to sit when you have a really good point. So, okay. again, since tonight's theme tended to be exploration, let's explore. Yeah. Okay. Start sitting, and then you're going to start getting so passionate you have to get up, and you'll feel it. You'll feel it. Okay. Here's what's not beautiful about this town. <laughs> From here, you can't see all the rust or cracked paint or whatever. 
but you can tell what the place really is. Can you see how fake it all is? <laughs> it's not even hard enough to be made out of plastic. Get up. It's a paper town. I mean, look at it. Look at all those cul-de-sacs. Those streets that turn in on themselves. All the houses that were built to fall apart. Pick up the phone. All the paper people living in their paper houses, burning the future to stay warm. Keep getting closer to you as you talk about that. All the paper kids drinking beer some bum bought for them at a paper convenience store. I've moved four times and never once in my life have I ever met someone who actually cared about something that mattered. Hey, yes. Yes. Could you feel it? Yeah, I got to get you more used to it. Yeah, yes. it'll take a while. It'll take a while. So practice, practice, practice this week. Block it a little bit. Think through yeah. some moments that you would do that. But the other, the last thing I'll leave you with is know that you don't have to stare at the person the whole time either. Okay. So like yeah. some of, sometimes I'm talking to someone and I'm just moving. Like okay. I don't have to look at you and think about what's when it makes sense to do that and when it makes sense to, mm -hmm. to be right at the person, okay? Yeah. Good work. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Does Isabel have one too? I can't remember. No, she's okay. not in this class. I didn't, she's just improv, right? Just making sure. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good job, man. Proud of you. Yes. Thank you. All right. Let's bring in that next performer. So what we'll talk about here as we are sending Wyatt out and moving to the next performer is we are just going to basically, with our blocking, start to use that phone, put it in different areas. But then I want us to realize the why. Like, why would I move here for this reason? Like, what is the purpose behind it? Like, for, for Wyatt, there's that moment where he starts, like, talking about the paper stuff and listing off these things and, the, and gets to the, the kids and the bum and the, and the booze. And that made sense for him to grab it and bring it closer because he, he's building upon a point that he really needs you to understand and feel. And so if you can start looking at your script using script analysis and almost like, like you were the director and you were going to have to block this thing out and, and figure it out for the entire production, you're producing it, how would you do that to give the writing justice? Where does it make the most sense to do those things for both the character and for the entire piece itself. So everybody, I want you to do that this week. Like literally score your scripts. Take it down, write it all out, and figure out exactly where it makes the most sense to do all of this stuff. And then from there, we can start to really live into character. All right, I got Brooke here. Hold on. Hello, Brooke. Hi. How are you? Um, good. Good. All right. Well, let's jump right into it, huh? Okay. We are trying to build up life, Lady Hutstinton, on a better, truer, purer basis than life rests on here. And this sounds strange to you all, no doubt. How could it sound other than strange? You rich people in England, you don't know how you were living. How could you know? You shut out from your society, the gentle and the good. You laugh at the simple and the pure. And living as you all do on others and by them, you sneer at self-sacrifice. And if you throw bread to the poor, it is merely to keep them quiet for a season. With all of your pomp and wealth and art, you don't know how to live. You don't even know that. You love the beauty that you can see and touch and handle. The beauty that you can destroy and do destroy. But of the unseen beauty of life, of the unseen beauty of a higher life, you know nothing. You have lost life's secret. Your English society seems to me shallow, selfish, foolish. It has blinded its eyes and stopped its ears. It lies like a leper and purple and it sits like a dead thing smeared with gold. It is all wrong, all wrong. Um. <laughs> Scene, you gotta say it there at the end, come on. I, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> all right, what'd you think? 
Um, I, I mean, it felt better than Pink it normally does because I, mm -hmm. I did try moving a little bit more with this one. Yeah, you took that direction very well. It's difficult, though, because I see it as like... I'm kind of confused because last week Matt told me to keep my eyes directly on the phone. Mm -hmm. But then you were just telling him that he doesn't have to look directly at like just one person. When he's thinking, when he's like, so here's what I mean for Wyatt, you mean? Yeah. When we're thinking of certain things, we move a little bit. So I'll try, I mean, you'll be able to kind of see me here in the back here. But like, if I'm thinking, I don't need to be looking directly at you to talk to you if I'm doing something. So like, yeah. for example, if I was going to write, which I might do, I mean, I did it for a moment of your thing. I was critiquing and I wrote something yeah. down. Like I'm still actively being a part of what you're doing. I'm just not right at you at that moment. So I might yeah. go, yeah, Brooke, really what you need to work on here is you really, we really need to work on staying in the moment. You know, like I, I wrote down here that you need to focus in the moment. That's not your actual critique, but <laughs> I was like, I don't know what that like, means. What does that mean? <laughs> no, it, it is a thing, but that's not what we, we're dealing with today. So my point is for Wyatt is that, and this is the same for yours too. Yes, you are looking at it, but think about it like a conversation. If I was looking at you for a whole conversation, I was like, all right, Brooke, you can see me. I'm looking right directly into your camera, correct? Yeah. All right, Brooke, let me tell you, you're a really great actress. Okay. So it's been really exciting to have you in class. I really enjoy it. Like, you're a good student, you're a good person, it's really fun. I love your dog, your dog's really great, go captain. Like, you've got a great life. I, I like your room, it's cool, the fan's cool. Uh, we're gonna talk about your, like, it's creepy. Like, yeah. it's creepy, it's weird, like, you don't do that, right? So that's what I mean. Like, there may be moments where you, where you get so passionate that you just start moving around the room and you don't look directly at camera. But when you do, when you're talking directly to the person, it's camera, that's what Matt meant. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Good. So I like the movement. I want you to score this a little more and go into, there is so, the text is so great. I mean, the words they use are so, like, probably because it's British, but elegant and like, <laughs> just like, just. Well, actually my character isn't British. Yours though, isn't. So. Yours is, you're right, American, but very American. prestigious. Um, and so the way she uses to describe certain things when she's upset are very yeah. powerful. And so I want, I want to be able to visualize those words with you. So yeah. go back this week. I love the movement. Know that you don't have to look at the camera the whole time. You could walk back and forth and throughout the room upset. And then, but when you have a point to deliver, you deliver yeah. it at her. Okay. Okay. And then look at all the words and try and imagine for you how you would really get those across to make sure that what you're visualizing in your mind is heard and seen in your emotion. Yeah. Yeah. And I think because I've been slowly, because I think I also kind of get caught a little bit in once you like rehearse it so many times in your mind, it kind of becomes just the same every time you do it. Mm -hmm. So like this time, cause normally I'll be like you rich people living in England, you don't know how you are living, but this time I try to change it. So now it's kind of like a little bit more like snarky, like, sure. like you rich people in England, but, like you, you can feel the difference when you change the words a little bit. Yeah. You can totally feel the difference. So like you, you should keep exploring those things. Like, yeah continue to try different ways of doing it as I, I said this early but as soon as you know what you're gonna do as soon as it's like no longer spontaneous for you then yeah it's not real anymore it's not yeah you should always be surprising yourself if you say the same line the same time every time then it's not real there's no way yeah okay got it good work way to take the direction last week I can't see, wait to see what you do with it this week okay thank you you're welcome Okay, so there, and that's a great point Brooke brought up. When we're using the phone and doing that, we this is our action point. So in normal movies, television, you would not look at the camera. But in this format, that's the person that you're talking to. So if you take this for example, like if I'm looking at the person on the TV over here, it's fine, it's good, but it doesn't look like I'm directly looking at you. It doesn't look like you're my focus and you're the person that I'm sending it at. So like on a screen, you'll usually see the other person. Yeah, you want to see what they're doing. There may be a moment where I watch them, but when I want to hit them with something, it's here because that's going to send the thought their way and make sure they really receive what I'm trying to give them. 
and all the time we talk when we're not doing when we're when we're excuse me we do stuff while we're talking like how many times have you talked to someone while you were doing the dishes or while you were doing laundry or cleaning or or doing so apparently I've been doing a lot of cleaning cleaning in your house like all the time so you totally can be actively doing stuff while in character while per, while being opposite somebody so as we're bringing this next person in I just want you to think on that and and think on the fact that you don't have to be stuck staring as, as a matter of fact if you are it's going to be awkward because we don't do that in regular life right V hello hey and for those watching we're gonna go a teeny bit over here right at uh, over time but we are close here all right okay V whenever you're ready where I did it I was the first oh, one. Oh, that's right why, why are you back in here <laughs> I'm like oh okay Wait a second oh we're bringing everybody back in all right I guess we all went I was like it's going to be because here we go Get that gallery view going. Hey, hello. Hey. For those watching, we're going to go a teeny bit over here, right at. Uh, Alright. Okay, this memory is no bueno. I did it. That was the first one. That's right. Alright, let's mute all those lives. Okay. We're bringing everybody back in. Alright, I guess we all went. This is what we were there. Yes. Okay. One second, everybody. Okay, I'm going to mute y'all for a second. Okay. All right, so. What did we take out of tonight? There was a lot that we hit on. Yeah, Andrea. Um, don't be afraid to explore creativity more and don't be so like, I feel like I'm always so restricted. I like have an idea and I'm like, oh, this is the idea that I'm gonna stick with and then I just don't explore more. And like, I kind of close the door on discovering anything new the second that I think I have a really good idea. So I think I just need to stop doing that. <laughs> sure. Yeah, and that I think we, we all get caught in that trap, you know? Like we come up with this idea and, and we enjoy it, you know? It's like this this worked, especially when something works. <laughs> like I'll hit yeah. something and it works on a certain time and I'm like, oh yeah, I gotta do that now. And <laughs> and the problem is it worked because it was in the moment. And it's like improv. Like sometimes people will do a character and they'll get a laugh on stage and then they'll come back and try to do that character again. And it doesn't work. Like. It just doesn't because that character in that moment was so organic to that moment, it can't happen again. It can't. Right. That character type can happen again, but that exact moment that that character happened will never be recreated. And so in the same way, yes, these are the same lines, but it should be different every single time. So that's awesome. I love that. Somebody else coming over here. Okay. Who else? What else did we get out tonight? And it doesn't work. Like, gotta mute it, it Brooke. Gonna mute it. Sorry. That's okay. Love to hear from a few others. What else did we get at tonight? Hi. Wyatt, it was good having you back. What'd you take? Thank you. Okay, um, for me, I learned to kind of not make it up. I mean, make it up, but like, be okay with like being comfortable with surroundings, not only looking at the camera and exploring like where I am and being able to like get up if I need to mm -hmm. or look at the camera if I need to and stuff like that. Yeah. Cool. And for next week, I want it sideways also. Okay. And um, okay. think of this, it's a whole new genre, literally. Okay. Like it's so cool that we get to do this, but it's like a literal new type of acting if you can look at it that way. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. What else? Anybody? Can I ask a quick question? Yeah, let's close with some questions. So we'll since we're doing the performances next week, what are we going to start after that? We'll be talking about that as a staff. Uh, we had a plan, so we'll figure out exactly what we're going to do, and we'll let you guys all know that this next week and talk through that. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? 
Okay. Well, great work, guys. Thank you, everybody who's watching in live. Thank you guys for being a part of today. Uh, right. It was so awesome that we got to see all that. Yeah. Shay, hi. Bye. <laughs> he was there for a second. Um, so I'm going to wrap up. Um, homework is to block these things. Work out like you got a whole week, guys. So use it. It's totally up to you where you can take this piece. And, and here's the thing. After this week, keep working these monologues. Like keep working them. We do not want to see you drop these things and, and just completely forget about them. Like you want to keep pushing these forward so that if you have an audition in three months and someone's like, you got a monologue, you're like, yeah, I do. <laughs> it's killer. <laughs> you know, because you kept working on it. Whereas I'll hear it all the time. An actor will be like have done something and three months down the line, I'm like, hey, so why don't you do the monologue from a few months ago? They're like, eh. I haven't touched that thing like you mm -hmm. have to keep working on these and keep building because you've, you've done so much work on them already um, so homework is to build on that think costume props again you are everything cinematographer editor all of it how can you really explore your space the more work you put into it the better it's going to be for you and for your audience we're gonna handle this you guys know how we do we're gonna handle this like a showcase and it's gonna be awesome like We'll figure out exactly that. There's going to be a set list of order and who's going when and all that stuff. And so that'll be sent to you, and it's going to be so great. So do your prep work. Show me what you can do in a week, and uh, I look forward to seeing you guys next week. I'm going to leave you guys in here so you can say bye to each other, hang out for a few, and build on the community part. You can leave if you need to leave. Uh, thank you guys for tonight and for being here. We appreciate you. Thank you, Brian. Thank, thank you, you Brian. Bye. Thank you. Puppy. <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs>